So Europe's premier club competition, the UEFA Champions League, last week confirmed all participants, which will be in the round of 16. And earlier on Monday, the UEFA headquarters in Switzerland saw the draw being held to determine the matchups. That, of course, shown live on Sportsmax, and they are as follows. Porto against Arsenal, Napoli facing Barcelona, PSG against Real Sociedad, Atletico Madrid, Inter Milan, PSV Eindhoven against Borussia Dortmund, Lazio facing Bayern Munich, Copenhagen against Manchester City and RB Leipzig against Real Madrid. Some interesting matchups all round and joining us via Zoom to give us uh, his thoughts is our football analyst Brent Sancho. Ricardo and I, Brent, talked at the top of the show and suggested that the 14-time winners Real Madrid and Manchester City, the reigning champions, have nothing to complain about with the draw. <laughs> It seems that we're anyway on paper. Obviously, it's a, it's a kind draw to them. Uh, we've seen some interesting lineups as early as the quarterfinals. So, yeah, you would suggest so. Although FC Copenhagen has uh, obviously had some favor against a Manchester club, but not on the blue side, on the red side. <laughs> yeah, and um, about the group stage and what we saw from the group stage, how competitive do you think these round of 16 matches will be? Because... Um, Sometimes the group stage just, well, it doesn't offer too much insight as to what happens when the knockout stage starts. Yeah, you know, this is normally where I, I put my caveat on this uh, discussion, being the fact that these games are going to start taking place in, I, I believe, February 13, 14, anywhere around there. So it's still ample time for a lot to happen in football. Uh, some teams coming into this uh, phase of the competition have not really hit form. Some teams are in, in great form. Uh, but if we are to analyze and, and based on the facts that we have in front of us thus far, uh, I would suggest that uh, the ones uh, that we would suggest are the favorites to possibly uh, go all the way, the likes of Real Madrid uh, in particular, uh, they would feel comfortable in, in what they're doing so far. Manchester City has had a bit of a, a blip in the English Premier League, but certainly uh, at the next level, at the, at the Champions League level, uh, I think they would, uh, you know, they, they would feel that they've done pretty okay. Yeah, um, just a little bit more on the Manchester City form, Brent, because as you've just uh, alluded to, uh, a bit of a stutter in, in, in recent weeks in the domestic league, but the team is full of quality. There's no, there's no disputing that. And as you suggested, February is a long way off. And uh, no worry from a Man City fan that things are being derailed. No, I don't think so, especially the fact that uh, Kevin De Bruyne is meant to be back in, in, in January next year or February. Hope by that time, he would have gotten a couple of minutes under his belt and would be well prepared and, 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 and ready to go in the Champions League format. Uh, that man there putting the ball into the back of the net, more than possibly be, be free of injury. Uh, knock on wood from a Manchester City fan perspective. But from a playing perspective, Lance, it's just, you know, they've, uh, <clears throat> they've been uncharacteristic in some of the, the, the draw points that we've seen from them so far uh they normally have uh, a much more drive or killer instinct in, in killing games off it, it, what we've seen in the last couple of weeks particularly in the epl is the fact that they would go up two nil or one nil and they're still driving trying to get that third fourth goal uh they're not a team that sits back after going up front and, and that's a little bit different from the manchester city that we saw last season so uh i'm very sure by the time that this competition comes around in february uh, Pep Guardiola would have uh, noticed that and would obviously try to make the, the right sort of uh, adjustments coming into the, the quarterfinals. Yeah, and Real Madrid, Brent, for good reason, the most feared team in, in Europe. They are, as we speak, being passed by Girona domestically in, in, in La Liga. But um, their, their track record in European Championship football is undeniable. And uh, for, for many, they, they remain favourites here. Yeah, you would have to think that that uh, the favourite tag would stay with Real Madrid simply because, as of all what you just mentioned, and you add the fact that you have an experienced title winner in Ancelotti at the helm uh, and a young, driven team of, of, of Real Madrid. And, and don't forget, Lance, as well, the, the addition of, of, of Vinny Jr. to come in uh, and one or two other players that might be injured. Again, you know, speaking of the fact that we, we're all the way here in December and the game starts in February, a lot can happen between them. But I just think of what we see from Real Madrid, it's very, very difficult to move away from them being favourites. The form that June Bellingham is in and, and the belief that he has in, in his capabilities, 
Uh, it's a tough, tough team to play, especially over two legs. Uh, and we've seen Real Madrid on several occasions uh, throughout the, the Champions League turn results around over the, the course of two legs because of that Champions League pedigree that they have. And I don't think there's any team in the competition could boost the type of pedigree that Real Madrid has. Yeah, Brent, I just want to zone in here on the La Liga teams making it through to the last 16 of the Champions League. Four of them, and interestingly, not only did they all qualify for the round of 16, but they all topped their groups. Um, and just looking at the matchups here, you spoke about Real Madrid. They will play Leipzig. Inter Milan, they will play Atletico Madrid, um, Barcelona, Napoli, and then there's Real Sociedad against the PSG. I want to get your thoughts, and I know you pointed out that we are some way away, and I completely agree with you because so much can change. But based on what we know now on this day in sport, do you suspect that these Spanish teams, all four of them, can continue their run and get past the round of 16? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, and that would mean that I'm suggesting that uh, Napoli would get, um, sorry, that uh, I think all three, not four. I, I do think that Napoli-Barcelona one is a tough one uh, for Barcelona, simply because, you know, I just don't see Barcelona getting a lot better. I think they may hit uh, one or two steps above what they are now, but I just don't think they're going to solve the conundrum. And that conundrum is finishing off a lot of the, the play that they develop in their middle third. And, and you just don't see, unless they go and they spend ridiculous money in the transfer market, uh, the likes of Rocky, I know is coming in in January. But outside of that, really, you know, I, I just don't see that changing. And, and if I was to choose one out of those four teams that possibly won't go on, I may suggest to you that Barcelona is the one of the Spanish teams that won't. Yeah, and when I looked at the, the eight matchups, um, Inter, Atletico, Barcelona, Napoli, those were the ones that stood out to me. Um, would you consider those to be the, the ties of the round of 16 for you as well? Yeah, yeah, there's no doubt about it. That uh, Inter, Atletico, it's going to be a, a very tight and cagey affair. Uh, you would think, of course, that the, the PSG and Real Sociedad as well. I just don't think PSG, that's another team as well that, has not played really well um, and, and has not has been very inconsistent throughout their season. I think getting into the, the knockout stages just by uh, the skin of their teeth, uh, I just don't see them, you know, changing and getting better. Uh, yes, they have the likes of Mbappe, who is a match winner, tournament winner. But I think what Real Sociedad is doing, that high press, that that uh, how difficult they are uh, to get into, um, will provide some some serious challenges for for PSG. So. Yeah, the, I think the La Liga teams will do well. As I said, I just think one or two of them may have some challenges and I'd earmark Barcelona to be the one that, that may not progress in the round. Yeah, so just to follow up on Ricardo's question then, Brent, you are suggesting, based on what you just said, that you think that Real Sociedad has a better chance of eliminating PSG than Barcelona has of taking care of Napoli. Yeah, that's how great I think of Barcelona at the moment. <laughs> I, I just feel, I just feel, Lance, what what they're producing right now, uh, without an out and out. No, yes, we know that they have Lewandowski up front, but it just hasn't worked for them with Lewandowski. And I just don't see how they're going to to turn that conundrum around of putting the ball into the back of the net. Everything else is is quite pretty okay, uh, but when you you have to score and against a very uh, well, look, a Napoli team that's not playing too well. Let's not kid ourselves as well. Uh, but I just feel that they, they need someone to put that ball into the back of the net. And I couldn't look at that Barcelona team and tell any, anyone in that studio that this is a player that's going to put the ball in the back of the net for Barcelona and see them progress. And I just think that would be their challenge. And, and, and I don't see how they're going to fix that. Yeah, Brent, we won't put you under pressure at this stage. But for sure, when we get closer um, to these uh, matchups in February, we'll be asking you to... Um, give us your predictions um, because then you will have a lot more material to work with in terms of where the teams are closer to competition time. Yeah, don't let the Barcelona fans kill me. It's early, it's early season. I may change my mind come February. Yeah, 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 <laughs> because, you know, so much could happen in January. Um, yeah. <laughs> Lance, yeah. yeah. I just want to ask from a CONCACAF perspective, I see where the Borussia Dortmund PSB Eindhoven will bring together a couple of U.S. international teammates against each other with uh, Dest and uh, Pepe up against the uh, Reina. Any, any interest there for you? Yeah, certainly interest. I, I've liked what uh, Dortmund has done this season and certainly PSV. 
um, desperately adding to, to the PSV cause. It'd be interesting because it comes in a year, Lance, where we have World Cup qualifiers coming up in CONCACAF. Obviously, the U.S. already qualified. It's a, it's a year where for Jamaica, they're playing in the, the Nations League semifinals and the possibility, of course, to go all the way and win it. So it'll be, it'll be keen to see where these players are coming up to that big game in March and, and possibly the final in June uh, and what type of form they'll be in. Because it's as I see it, uh, it will be a keenly contested four for Nations League and, and Jamaica does have a genuine chance of going all the way. Mm. Okay, Brent, we're going to leave it there. As I said, uh, we have uh, a couple of months to um, build ourselves up to these UEFA Champions League round of 16 matches. And of course, all of these teams will have uh, domestic assignments in between that time. But So thanks for, for talking to us and uh, as usual, um, have a great evening and we'll talk again soon. No problem, guys. Have a good one. Yeah, Brent Sancho there. And we'll be back with more on the Sports Mag Zone after this. Thank you.